Okay, let's go and figure out how many seconds there are in seven years. So how many seconds in seven years? That's the uh, topic of this particular video. And you might be saying, well, what kind of question is this? Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this for nothing more than just to practice converting units of measure and uh, writing uh, large numbers in scientific notation. So if you feel like you do this problem, by the way, feel free to use a calculator for sure. Um, go ahead and pause the video and do this. Let's go ahead and assume 365 days in our years. Okay, we're not going to deal with uh, leap years, so let's use uh, 365 days uh, in a year. And if you want to go ahead and give this a whirl, go ahead and do it in the best way you think you know how. And put your final answer in the comment section. Now, it's a little difficult to write your answer in uh, scientific notation because it does require powers, but if you know, put that in the comment section the best you can as well. So we're going to get into this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but um, if you are struggling in math, or maybe you want to get ahead, or maybe you feel like you're not getting the instruction you need in school, you know, obviously you're looking at um, this video because you want to practice math or learn math. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you that I have a fantastic math help program that could really give you the instruction you need to be successful in math. Very, very comprehensive, and I like to believe extremely clear and understanding. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could really help you be successful in your respective math courses. Now, if you're uh, preparing for any test that has a math section, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. These are very, very important exams um, that a lot of people, a lot of you out there may be taking, so I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool program and curriculum, extremely comprehensive. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. I'm going to let you use my math notes. You can find links to this, uh, to my notes, and of course my math help program in the description of this video. But if you want great math grades, you have to start taking great math notes. It's just something I've seen over decades of teaching mathematics. Okay, so I'm going to get into the solution to this problem right now. Now, if you don't want to see the solution just yet, you want to work on it, go ahead and pause the video. But uh, for those of you that are just dying to see the answer, let's get into it. All right, let's start off by uh, uh, figuring out how many seconds there are in one year. Now, there's different ways we can kind of approach this. You may not have uh, written out uh, your work in this exact way, but I think this is the most, kind of the, uh, the best way to uh, lay out our work so we can see what's going on because we, what we want to do is convert units of measure. So let me show you what I got here. So let's start off with seconds, right? We want to figure out how many seconds are in one year. So uh, we start. We need to start equating things. So we know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, so this is what we call a conversion factor. So we have 60 seconds in one minute. Now, if I want to figure out uh, how many uh, seconds there are in an hour, well, then I have to get rid of minutes. Okay, so now I have 60 minutes per one hour. Okay, I'm going to show you here what's uh, in a, uh, a second. Uh, the, how I have these conversion factors set up. It's very, very, uh, it's done in a very specific way. All right, so now I have minutes and hours. So here I have 24 hours in one day. And then over here I have 365 days in one year. So here is what I'm talking about when you set up conversion factors. So let's take a look at this. When you're multiplying fractions, remember you're multiplying uh, the numerator and the denominators, but what's going to end up happening is these units of measures are going to start uh, cross canceling. So let's look at the seconds and minutes. So here I have a minute in the, the denominator, and here I have a minute in the numerator. So this, uh, these minutes cross cancel. So we're, we still have our seconds, but the minutes are, are gone. Now let's look at hours. Okay, so hours, I have an hour down here and I have an hour up here. So the hours are now going to go away. So I have a day down in the denominator, and I have days up here in the numerator, so these units are going to go away, and I'm left with what? I'm left with seconds, and I'm left with year, okay, a year. So this is what you want to be doing when you're figuring out these conversion factors. So for example, right here, you want to get these units of measure to cross-cancel, and the only 
things you want remaining are the is the conversion that you wanted. Okay, I want to know how many seconds are in a year. So these are my last remaining um, units of measure. Okay, because everything else was cross canceled. Now let's just make an observation here. 60 minutes to one hour. Well, one hour. Okay, there's one hour in 60 minutes. All right, this is uh, correct as well. But I wouldn't want to write this conversion factor. Because look, I would have minutes in the denominator and I would have the minutes in the denominator down here. They wouldn't cross cancel. So when you're setting up these conversion factors, what you want to be focused in on is getting these units of measure to cross cancel. So you're left with, uh, you know, the final answer that you want. Okay. Again, I want to go from, uh, I want to determine how many seconds are in a year. All right. So now if I look here, I have 60. 60, 24, and 365. So I have to multiply all these together. 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. That leaves you with 31,536,000 uh, seconds over one year. Okay, well, year, right? So that's what that is. So that's how many seconds are in one year. Okay, so if you got that right, and maybe you didn't do it this exactly this way, but you kind of just, you know, uh, use kind of maybe common sense or logic. Uh, but nevertheless, you got this final answer in terms of seconds in a, in one year. That's fantastic. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and give you a little happy face. That's a messed up happy face, so I could do a little bit better than that. There you go. There's a happy face, a couple check marks, but we're not done yet because you want to know how many seconds there are in seven years. Okay, so in one year... We have uh, 31 million 536,000 uh, seconds. So how many seconds uh, are there in seven years? Well, obviously we just uh, multiply this uh, annual, how many seconds are in one year by seven, and we get this number right here. Okay, so we get 220 million 752,000. All right, so this is our final answer in a few uh, we're able to calculate this correctly. I will go ahead and give you a nice happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars. Okay. However, uh, you're not going to get the final, final bonus unless you were able to take this number and put this into scientific notation. So what is scientific notation? Well, this is our answer in scientific notation. Okay. In scientific notation, we want to express things in terms of powers of 10. And if you just kind of think about the word scientific notation, in science, you're dealing with very, very, very large numbers and very, very, very small numbers. And it's just, you know, this number actually, this is actually fairly manageable. But if you're dealing with a number like this, I'm just going to make something up and not even attempt to say it. But let's say I had to write this number, okay? Uh, okay, let's say I had a... Keep, I had to do a lot of calculations with this number. That would be pretty horrendous because that's a lot of writing. Okay, well, in science, you're dealing with very, very extremely large numbers. Think about it like in the universe, how many light years or how many years or uh, miles away certain planets or stars might be. Dealing with extremely large numbers, and, and also you're dealing with extremely small numbers as well when you talk about atoms and molecules, etc. So that's why we have scientific notation. It is a notation, i.e. a way to write uh, numbers. Oftentimes we see in science very large or very small numbers using a power of 10. Okay, so how does this work? Well, the way this is, uh, the way we do this, and I have a lot of other videos on scientific notation in my pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra courses as well. But basically, right here, uh, the decimal point for this number, okay, our final answer is right here, right, like 0, 0.0. That's where the decimal points at. But in the scientific notation, what we want to do is uh, relocate this decimal point in such a way that all these digits are between a number between one and 10, okay? So if I if I have 0.22, if I put that decimal point right there, that's not between one and 10. If I have 22.0, that's not between one and 10. So the logical place to put that decimal point is right here. So I'm gonna relocate that decimal point right here. So that's 2.2, okay? So 2.20752, that is a number between one and 10. I'm going kind of quick here with scientific notation. So this is just a quick like rehash review. 
if you're lost about scientific notation, if you, have, you haven't really studied it, well, then this is not like a full lesson on it. But, you know, maybe you can certainly pick up uh, the basics about it. All right, so in scientific notation, we relocate the decimal point. Um, so we have a number between the digits form a number between 1 and 10. So 2.2, that's, that's between 1 and 10. So it's 2.20752. Now, how many spaces... Uh, did I have to move, how many digits did I have to move that decimal point over, okay, to get to get right here? Well, I had to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? I had to move that decimal point over 8 uh, uh, spaces. So uh, you're going to write times 10 to the 8th power. So really, it's from here to where you move out. And again, that's how we get our exponent. And it's going to be positive, not negative, okay, because we're dealing with a large number. And this is our final answer, all right, 2.2, 2.20752 uh, 2 uh, times 10 to the eighth seconds, okay? That's how many seconds there are in seven years. And if you got that right, well, I must uh, go ahead and upgrade your little happy face to include a good old 1987 uh, Mohawk as well. Fantastic. Excellent. You know, and I know a lot of you out there are saying, well, why are, you know, this is just like a, you know, busy work. There's no value in doing this. Well, there is a lot of value because in mathematics, you know, mathematics is the language of science. Okay. And whether you're taking uh, physics, chemistry, biology, it doesn't make a difference. They're going to be dealing with formulas and very large or, or very small numbers. And uh, quite frequently, you're going to be working in scientific notation. And this is an absolute must for those of you that are going to be taking any sort of algebra course. Okay, so uh, if this video was helpful in some small, tiny way, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That would uh, help me out tremendously. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So I got stuff from arithmetic, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and even calculus, and even some science stuff as well. But uh, my best math help will always be with my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.